Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sebastian. Welcome to my channel. Please press that like button, subscribe and let's talk about the Audi A5 Cabriolet. The Audi A5 Cabriolet of the previous model is now slowly becoming more affordable for a larger group of open car lovers. I bought mine second hand. Uh, when I bought it the car was two years old and I've now been driving it for two and a half years. So I've learned quite a bit about this car. In this video I want to tell you some more about why I have fallen for this car. How I came to the decision of buying this particular car. What you really should know before buying one and how to select a nice one. And of course what it's really like to actually own and drive it on a daily basis. I am in love with this car, but this is not a promotional video. I'll be as factual as possible and I will be brutally honest, so you can decide for yourself if this could be your dream car. Because this car is in my opinion for the most part truly beautiful. It's the car I had been wishing for for a long time. It's just a stunning and beautifully shaped car with perfect proportions and a unique and subtle design stripe on the sides. For me this car is both sexy and badass at the same time. Depending on the color the A5 is leaning more towards beautiful or tough looking. So it's a bit more tough in black and a bit more modest in white, depending on your personal taste. But there are several more colors to choose from of course. The build quality of a car is very important to me. For the most part it's very good. It's clearly built to last for a long time. And some A5 cars that are now 10 years old can still look as almost new. In general this is a true quality product. So there's plenty of good stuff to mention. But it has got some flaws as well. And there are things you really should know about this car before actually buying one. There are a few downsides and I will tell you more about those in a moment. Ok, so you are on the lookout for a convertible car. But how to know if the A5 is the right car for you? When should the A5 be on your list? Well the first thing you need to decide on when you start looking for any convertible car is that you basically have to choose the number of desired seats. Choices are either a two seater or a four seater. I don't have to explain this any further, but you should realize that four seaters are of course much more practical. But roadsters tend to just drive better as the wheelbase is shorter, the car can be more stiff and the weight can be more balanced. A two seater is usually more fun to drive if you are into cornering and sporty car handling. A four seater however is a bit of a compromise between fun and practicality. The second thing is that you have to decide between a hardtop and a softtop car. Now this is of course to a large extent a matter of taste. But for me a hardtop is not an option. I am 100% pro softtop. Why? Well I think that most hardtop convertibles are just not very beautiful. As most convertible cars are based on sedans or hatchbacks, the hardtop roof often ruins the original design. Furthermore the roof has to fold into the back of the vehicle and in case of a hardtop this will leave you with very little room for any luggage. Hardtop lovers will now start shouting that soft tops are cold, cannot be parked in the rain and are very noisy inside. But that is just not true. Soft tops nowadays are very well insulated and they are well protected against any weather conditions. And my car is not noisy at all. It's actually very quiet inside. I've got a so called acoustic roof with some extra layers in it which is just brilliant. But the standard soft top Audi roof is a very good choice as well. The third thing you will discover is that you don't have that many cars to choose from. There aren't that many quality four seaters in this particular car segment. Especially if you want a solidly built and reliable car you will have to choose between a few German or Japanese makes. The fourth thing is that you will have to make a tough decision on of course your budget. Depending on the age of the car, the level of luxury, type of engine and gearbox you now have a variety of A5's to choose from. Also keep in mind that this is a luxury car and good maintenance can be expensive at times. 
especially if you like big wheels with quality tires. And original parts just always seem to cost a bit more than expected. But hey, it's your dream car and you must be willing to spend some money to keep it pristine. My choice is a 2016 1.8 liter 4 cylinder. It's a front wheel drive petrol model which is the base engine, at least in my country. It has plenty of power and torque with relatively good fuel economy and a truly fantastic Multitronic automatic gearbox. The amount of power is more than sufficient for everyday driving. The gearbox is extremely smooth. Uh, from what I heard the early versions of the gearboxes did have some issues though. But I think they fixed all that and in my experience the Multitronic is just a perfect gearbox. I drive my A5 the whole year round. My country is relatively flat with very little hills and fairly soft winters. And I am not really a sporty type of driver. So front wheel drive and this engine with 170 horsepower is more than enough for me. But having said that there are a few things that I think are important to have. This is what I spent my money on. A more recent model year, in my case a 2016 facelifted car with low mileage. Back then it had only 20,000 kilometers or 14,000 miles. And some interesting options. So rather than spending my money on a bigger engine or quattro all wheel drive. But of course that all depends on your personal taste and preferences. So what are the options that I personally think are a must have? I'll start with the wheels. These 19 inch rotor wheels just look fantastic. There are 20 inch wheels available as well but with those the car will be much more bumpy so I think 19 inch is just perfect. They look badass but not over the top if you know what I mean. The B&O sound system sounds really nice once you've figured out the settings. Hi-Fi purists will want an even better system though but for me this is more than good enough. And the combination of leather and Alcantara is just beautiful. But all leather upholstery is very nice too. The Airscarf warm air blowers will lengthen your open driving season with about an extra month per year. Especially if you have the heated seats as well. For me anything from 18 degrees Celsius, that's about 65 degrees Fahrenheit and upward is roof down weather. The big advantage of the electric seats will reveal itself to you if you have passengers inside. You can be quite happy with the normal seats but these electric ones are just phenomenal. They are so easy to adjust and it makes accessing the rear much easier. And for instance my wife likes to have a higher driving position when she is driving. And these seats just make it so easy to find the right settings in just seconds. The acoustic roof has two big advantages. First of all it's a bit more quiet inside which is nice if you like good music, endless phone calls or just enjoy some peace and quiet. As I shoot videos in my car this is something I highly value. And after a tough day at work I like to turn up the music volume without scaring the hell out of other people on the road. And the other advantage is that this roof has better insulation. So your car interior will heat up more quickly in the morning. And it will be easier for the heater to keep the car warm inside or cool in the summertime. There is truly hardly any difference from the normal A5 and the construction is just rock solid and built to last forever. But as I said earlier this goes for the acoustic roof but the standard foldable roof is very good as well. Oh and I really like that sporty steering wheel. But that's just me. Does the A5 have downsides as well? Well yes, the A5 does have a few flaws, some unexpected flaws even. For example, the armrest squeaks sometimes when you lean on it. The sun shields are very tiny and therefore almost useless and they're made of plastic. The same goes for some other bits here and there, like the door panels. Not everything inside feels rock solid. The doors are very big and you will need quite a lot of space to open them. My driveway next to my home is a bit narrow so I have to let my wife step out first before parking the car. The MMI Audi Multimedia can be annoyingly slow. My 2013 Volkswagen Golf is 3 years older but it has a much better system. 
it can take up to five minutes before your phone will connect and at times the ZNAV freeze frames. It's just not up to modern standards. And only the Audi dealer can update the maps, which is quite expensive as well. So make sure you get that update installed before picking up your purchase. The rotor wheels are quite difficult to clean. You will have to do it yourself as a car wash is not able to clean the wheels properly. I don't mind doing that but it can take up to half an hour or so to get all the dirt off. There is no wiper for the rear windshield so when it's raining it's a bit more difficult to drive backwards. My car has a rear view camera but you have to be careful still. The car is not as stiff as a normal A5 and it does have some little squeaks and rattles here and there. A bit more than I expected to be honest. And the seat belts start rattling as well when you're driving with the roof down. The roof itself is very good as I mentioned earlier but you will experience that occasional drop of water coming in, in stormy weather conditions or when you are in the car wash. Easy to forgive. The A5 is a big car on the outside but not very roomy inside in the back. So don't try to squeeze in people in the back taller than 1 meter 80 or 5'9 on trips longer than 30 minutes or so. Kids up to 15 years of age will be fine, although they will not find any USB ports in the back. Bummer! And last but not least, if you go out for a drive with friends, Make sure you don't go faster than 80 km per hour or 50 miles. In the front you're ok, but you will completely mess up the hairdos of the ladies in the back, with all the screaming and the angry looks. But to be honest, that can be fun too. Well, I hope you find this first video informative. Please comment or ask me questions and I will answer. I plan to make more detailed videos about my A5 in the near future. Just let me know about what topic you would like to know more and I will make a video about that. Thank you for watching. My name is Sebastian. Press that like button, subscribe and I will see you next time.